Hi, John Ferguson Smart here again. I'd like to welcome you back to this series of tutorials on writing automated web tests in Serenity BDD. In this tutorial, we'll be picking up where we left off in tutorial one and refactoring the simple test we wrote using a different approach. This new technique that we're going to be looking at is called screenplay, and it's a technique that lets you write better, better structured, more reusable, more maintainable, and more readable tests. And Serenity BDD makes it really easy to apply. While this approach might be a little tricky if you're not used to object-oriented programming, I'm sure you'll pick it up really easily as we go through the examples. And I think you'll find that the end result is really, really worth the effort. So let's get started. So we're back in the when browsing product categories test where we're going to try and check that from the home page if we navigate to the motors category we get to a page with the title containing new and used cars. Now I'm sure you'll remember this test is testing the eBay home page that you can see here and that when we click on motors we get to a page with the title containing new and used cars, which you can't really see here. And here we go. We can see it when we have some tabs. So that's all cool. Let's see how this would look if we were doing it with the screenplay pattern. Now, rather than explaining what the screenplay pattern is in great detail, I'll link some articles at the end of the tutorial if you want to learn about more of the theory. I'm just going to show you what the tests would actually look like. So I'm going to start off with a test called should be able to view motor products. So it's effectively the same test. I'm just going to rename it slightly differently so that we can have them in the same class to be able to compare them side by side. Should be able to view motor products. Now screenplay uses what we call a narrative approach or an actor centric approach. We work with actors. Actors are people who interact with the system and cause things to happen and then observe the results. And now traditionally I like to give my actors names. So I'm going to call act this actor Mike. Now an actor has abilities. Mike can browse the web with a browser. That's how he's going to manipulate eBay. And we have to tell the test this. So we'd say Mike can browse the web with the browser that we have so earlier on. Now you can see this is a very fluent, readable way of writing code. That's the Serenity package is effectively a domain specific language, a DSL, that helps you write more fluent tests in Java. So we've got Mike who can browse the web with his browser. Now we're going to try and figure out what Mike is actually doing what the test is about. The test is really about that when you navigate to a category from the home page, then you should see the a particular title. So we can write something like that. We just say when Mike, so we can see we're getting the uh, autocomplete from IntelliJ here, and we're actually using this given when then class when, which comes from Serenity screenplay, as you can see. So when Mike attempts to and here it's going to do something so I'm going to say something like navigate to the category and really here I'm just writing what I the code I would like to see because the code the classes don't exist yet we'll see how we write them shortly so we've got when Mike attempts to navigate to the category category motors we can even make this a little bit more readable by adding a static import. So when Mike attempts to navigate to the category motors, that's the action. And what's the outcome that we expect? We simply say then. So you can see it's uh, quite a BDD style. If you've done any work with BDD tools like Cucumber or Jbehave or Spock, the style of writing these tests is very similar, except that it's all in code, so it's much easier to maintain than Cucumber code. Should see that. So what should Mike see to check that the outcome has actually happened, that the expected outcome has occurred? So basically what we're trying to prove is that Mike should see that the web page title should contain new and used cards, as we've got earlier on. 
So we'd say the web page title and it contains a string. Now this is a Humcrest matcher as opposed to the uh, J assert that we, the assert J that we used earlier, but it's very similar in, in style. So we can see here we've got, we're getting the Humcrest matcher from, contains string from the Humcrest library. So we can see that this says, then Mike should see that the web page title contains string new and used cars. That's fairly obvious to anyone reading it, what the test is actually trying to demonstrate. So a big thing in screenplays, we try and make it very obvious what the inputs are or what the actions are and what the expected outcomes are. So we've got an input. When Mike attempts to navigate to the category motors, then Mike should see that the web page title should contain this string. So let's try and figure out what this attempts to thing is about. So we're saying when Mike attempts to do something, what this method is, so this is all framework, Serenity uh, provided methods. We say when Mike attempts to perform a number of tasks, see actors perform tasks and then ask actors observe consequences about the system. That's essentially all there is to the screenplay plugin. So Mike performs a task and Mike should see a particular consequence. And the consequence is a question of some kind querying the application and an assertion, a Humcrest assert. As I said, there will be some links in to look at this in more detail, but here I just want to get the general picture of what a screenplay test looks like. Now let's go back to the attempts to. This is what we call a task or an action. So the attempts to navigate to the category is the name of our class. Let's create this class. We're going to call our package tasks because they're business tasks. And uh, the, our performables implement either the performable interface or for more convenience, either the task for a business action or action for a, a UI interaction. So here it's more a business action, so we're going to call it a task. Now we're going to implement the only obligatory method of this class, which is perform as. This is where all the action happens. Everything else in the method is, everything else in the class is just setting up the class or the object for this method. So when we say navigate to the category, you'll notice it's a static method. What we're really doing is saying, okay, return this a performable, which is actually return a navigate to object instantiated with this category. So what I really want to do is do something like this. New navigate to, and then I'll pass in the category because for the perform to do something, we're going to need a category to work with. And I'm going, so I'm going to create a category object. So now that's all I need to set it up. Here we have attempts to navigate to the category. So this code here generates a performable object, which we pass to the attempts to method. And then Mike will attempt to do each of the performable objects that we pass to it. So we're effectively passing in a list of tasks for Mike to do. And then we're seeing what the outcomes here are here in the should see that section. There's one last thing we need to do here. When I wrote that, it's actually an oversimplification. We need to uh, do something a little bit more sophisticated because we want Serenity to be able to manage this performable as well, to be able to keep track of the actions, to report on each action that happens in this uh, method, in this, this object, to keep, to inject any dependencies and so forth. So we're going to do a shortcut call, or using a class called instrumented instance of, so we're going to return an instrumented instance of the navigate to class and it needs a property. So we're going to give it a with property category. So that effectively does a new, but it instantiates it and injects any page objects that we've set up with the correct driver and so forth. So now the last thing we need to do 
is to actually implement this performs as method. So another really nice thing about the screenplay pattern is that it all acts as a nice sort of like a Russian doll because we have Mike attempting to do things at a business level here. So Mike is attempting to perform a business task. And inside we've got Mike who's been passed as the actor who will still be performing things, but now he's performing things at a UI level. So we're still saying actor attempts to, and we're going to get him to, to perform some tasks. The first thing we want him to do is to open the web page. So we simply say open browser on the eBay homepage, for example. And here we can use that page object that we set up earlier on. We can create our own special page object, eBay homepage. And this page will be injected into the uh, task when Serenity calls it. So here we're opening the home page. The next thing we need to do is to click on the menu item. So we're going to say again, click on. Now you notice here, we're saying open, we're saying click. We've got a lot of methods like that. We've got select, we've got enter, we've got uh, a lot of methods uh, around UI interactions and they're all done in this task manner. So they are all effectively tasks. We don't interact directly with the web driver instance very much in screenplay. We go through these actions and there are some really nice things about going through actions other than the fact that we're separating concerns very nicely. The navigate to task which is a business task just tells the actor what actions it needs to perform. It doesn't have to worry about web driver implementation and so forth. We could have another version of a task which for instance uses the back end or RESTful web services as opposed to going through a UI to perform a particular task. So we get a lot of flexibility doing things this way. So here, what we're trying to do is click on, if you remember correctly, we're clicking on the menu bar. So I'm going to click on the navigation bar. So I'm going to just call it navigation bar. And in the navigation bar, I want to click on something that I can get my hands on. And I'm going to say, I want to click on the category, category, category. And what this is, is is what we call a target. So you can click on several things. You can actually click on a string, which is a CSS or XPath selector. We could do it that way. We could click on a web element. We could click on a web driver selector, a buy. We could do quite a lot of things, but I want to show you how we do it with what we call a target, which is a screenplay specific class. So I'm going to add this task into the UI element. And this task has a simple role in life, or it's actually a UI element, it's not a task, sorry, my bad. It's going to return a target. And how's it going to return a target? Actually, let's just implement the method here. It's going to return a target for a given category. Now, I, in the last method, I used a sequence of web driver calls to do this. But in this case, what I want to do is tell Serenity how to localize the category menu item in one go. I'm going to do so, return target the category name category. So what a category is, is what a target is rather, is a way of identifying an element on the page that you want to click on or that you want to interact with in some way. And you give it a name. So it appears in the reports with not just a CSS selector, which is fairly hard to interpret, but the actual name of what it is. So here I'm saying target the category, target the motors category. And then how do you locate that element? Well, we say located by, so we say target the category, located by, and here I had a, I'm going to give it a bit of a CSS 
expression or actually rather an XPath expression because we can't do a CSS expression that does exactly what we want. And here I won't bore you with the details, but we're basically looking for an element, a category element that contains a given text. And to pass in the given text, we, we simply pass in the of method, which will instantiate the instances here. So the first parameter will instantiate curly bracket zero, the second parameter will instantiate curly bracket one, and so forth. So what we've done here is generated a selector that has a label that will appear in the reports. So the reports are nice and meaningful. It has a locator here, an XPath locator. And in this case, you don't always have to do this, but in this case, it has a parameter. Now there's one last thing we need to do to the navigate to class. We need to tell Serenity how we want to appear it to appear in the reports. And we do that using the at step annotation again on the perform as method, because this will tell Serenity what needs to be written in the report to describe this action. And we've got quite a bit of control over what goes into it. For instance, here we're using the curly bracket zero parameter, which is a shorthand for the first parameter of the method here, which is the actor. So this will pass in the actor. It will say Mike or Jane or whoever the actor is. And then we can also use the hash notation. So hash category will go and find the category field of this task object. So we're saying, going to say Mike navigates to the category category. Now this is important if we want the step to appear correctly in the report. So we need to remember to do this. So let's see what we've done from the top down. We've got Mike attempts to navigate to the category motors. Inside here, we've got we Mike attempts to open the browser on the page and then click on the category. So I'll run this in exactly the same way as I run the other tests, just as a JUnit test. And we can see it's kicking off here. It's opening the browser. It's doing pretty much the same thing as the other test, except uh, we'll see the reporting is a little bit more elegant as well. So now the test has succeeded. Let's have a look at the reports. Here are the reports that Serenity has generated for this test. And we can see it corresponds almost exactly to what we wrote. Mike navigates to the modes category, then the title of the page should be a string containing new and used cars. Let's look at the test, the original test, where we have Mike attempts to navigate to the motors category and should see that the page contains string new and used cars. So pretty much exactly the same thing. But we might want to know the details about what happens when Mike navigates to the motives category. So that's all nested inside. So we have our business task at the top level and our UI interactions underneath. So Mike opens the eBay homepage and Mike clicks on the motives category. We have in these reports a very elegant breakdown of the tasks that the user performs and the actions the user has to perform for each of those tasks, all nicely documented with screenshots. This is a really nice thing that happens very fluently, very easily with the screenplay pattern because we don't really need to do a lot of extra work for it to be reported. And that's it for today, so do stay tuned for more Serenity BDD tutorials that will be coming out in the near future. You can find the source code for all of these tutorials on GitHub at the URL shown here. And if you think you could benefit from some more focused help in your Serenity BDD testing efforts, do check out our remote mentoring packages on the URLs at johnfergusonsmart.com. This is John Ferguson Smart signing out until next time.